Hey, it's Paul from HowToPlayBass.com here. Got a lesson for you on playing through Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix. Great track, iconic track, great bass line. What I've done is split the bass line down into three sections. We've got the intro, which is a two-bar pattern that repeats. It's also used later on in the tune. We've got the verse pattern, which is a nine-bar pattern. And then we've got an interlude to the guitar solo, which is three bars long, plus the guitar solo. Um, all these patterns are used and recur throughout the tune. Um, so I've in the original transcription, the bass line is, is very improvised and the, although you've kind of got a theme going through, there's lots of variations. So what I've done is split them down into simple sections that you can repeat to start with to get through the song. Then as you get more confidence, you can try throwing in some variations and varying it up. Um, but if you just learn the three sections that I teach and put them together in correlation with the song, you'll be able to get through the song and sound pretty authentic too. Um, just before we g head over to the lesson and look at the intro, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber to my e-zine, there's a link underneath the video. Head over to my website and subscribe. There's a series of four lessons that you get as a thank you for subscribing, the first one of which is Sex on Fire. These, uh, the first three lessons are video and PDF lessons. The last lesson is just a PDF lesson. The only way to get those is to head over and subscribe, so please do that if you haven't already. Let's head over to the video uh, and the lesson and start looking at the intro. The first pattern we're going to look at is the intro pattern. This is also used um, later on in the tune after the guitar solo. It's used to transition from the guitar solo and then to verse three. We're going to use a simple two bar pattern and just play that whenever we get to the intro pattern. Here's how it goes and we'll talk through the notes. Two, three, four. the guitar would come in and you just keep playing that pattern underneath it very simple pattern all you're playing is the notes are just E the uh, chord over the top is what's been called the Hendrix chord which is an E7 sharp 9 chord and um, we're just playing the root note which is E here at the seventh fret of the A string or the octave here at the ninth fret of the G string very simple pattern and we those notes are kind of quarter notes, but we're just making them a bit more staccato to give them a bit more oomph and a bit more thud. Um, and so when you're on stage and playing that, you also get to move a bit of air with those notes as well, uh, which will really help with the feel. So that section, very simple. In the intro, you play that two bar pattern five times. In the section in the middle after the guitar solo, you only play it four times. Um, so that then leads us to the next section, which is the verse. The verse pattern, it's kind of an odd pattern, it's a nine bar sequence. You've got a two bar pattern which is played three times, then a stab, and then you've got the little riff on the end which you'll, you'll hear in a minute and recognise. Now the two bar pattern that you repeat, I'm going to play some variations of it and talk through them. You are free to make up some more variations or throw in some variations of your own. As long as you get the kind of the flavour of this two bar pattern you'll be fine. I'll play through the nine bar section and we'll talk through it. Three, four. to the guitar solo section depending on where you are in the tune. So let's look at um, the first couple of bars. Now the chords go from the Hendrix chord, the E7 sharp 9, to a G and an A. So it's fairly straightforward harmonically. First bar, again, we're just using E's. Um, we're either using E here, the seventh fret of the A string, or we're using the open E string. So the first bar I played this. Play that again. just using those E's, either the 7th fret of the A string or the open E string, so you should be able to hear where I'm playing the open E string. I'll play it one more time really slowly. And then the second bar, we're going down to G, 3rd fret of the E string, and then we're going up to A, and we're playing A at the 5th fret of the E string, and then to C sharp, 4th fret of the A string, D fifth fret of the A string. Then we're into the next E chord or E7 sharp 9 chord. 
The second time I played that, I played a slight variation. I played this. So again, we're just playing either E at the 7th fret of the A string or the open E string. Then down to G, variation, and a variation on the A pattern as well. So what I did there was I played G, G, D, G, 3rd fret of the E string for G, 5th fret of the A string for D, then go up to A and I played A, A, C sharp, D, so same fret notes as we did the first time we played through um, that A chord, um, we just changed the rhythm slightly, the first time through we played, second time it's much more 8th note, then the third time I played through the the E7 sharp 9, I just played 8th notes on the root at the 7th fret of the A string. And then I repeated that phrase we just played from G to A. And then you've got the stab, again, E, 7th fret of the A string, and then you've got this riff. And that riff is made up of So the notes are F sharp at the 9th fret of the A string, E at the 7th fret of the A string, D, 5th fret of the A string, then you've got this higher run is B, the 9th fret of the D string, D, the 7th fret of the G string, and then that top note is G at the 12th fret of the G string, and you repeat those last three notes, B, D, G. Now, when you play this phrase, you can throw some slides in to give it a bit of colour. The first one I'd throw in is the very first note, the F sharp, I'd slide in from E. And you can use a slide to not only add some colour to your line, but facil facilitate the shift up to that top G. So that just throws in a little colour of your line. Now, one thing to note, when you're playing this song, this little riff, or this little sequence, is something that you've got to get right, because uh, the guitarist will be playing it as well. If you get it wrong, it will sound horrible. So do make sure you practice this section more than any other section. So when you come to this section, you can nail it, get it. Um, and then the other thing to practice is going back from that high G, either to the next verse or to the next section that we're going to look at, which is the guitar solo. And it happens twice in the tune where it comes out of that riff and goes to A here at the fifth fret of the E string, which is kind of that, the transition to the next section of the tune. So let's go and have a look at that, the, this transition and what's played under the guitar solo. And that section is also used as kind of the end of the tune after verse 3 in the outro. There's a, like a three bar interlude which sets you up for the guitar solo and then you've got an eight bar guitar solo which is comprised of a two bar pattern played four times. So we do the three bar interlude first, it's very straightforward, we talk through those notes, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, let's talk through those notes first, then we'll go to the guitar solo. So it starts on A, which is the 5th fret of the E string, and it goes to the octave, which is the 7th fret of the D string, and it repeats that. Then it shifts up to B, 7th fret of the a E string, same rhythm, but just on that low B. Then we go up to D, at the 5th fret of the A string, and then you've got a little, like, very subtle chromatic approach note which is D sharp at the sixth fret of the A string. So I'll play that pattern again, three, four, up to B, to D, and then you had those last two notes, the chromatics, the lead up to the next note of the guitar solo. So I'll play this two bar pattern a couple of times that's underneath the guitar solo, then we'll talk through the notes. Three, four, Okay, 
So you notice again there's some slides in there. Let's look at the basic notes first and then we'll add the slides in. So the first bar is in E. You've got the open E string. Then you've got E, 7th fret again of the A string. Then you've got 7th fret of the A string, E, open E, up to F sharp, 9th fret of the A string, back to E at the 7th fret of the A string. So that's the first bar. Then the second bar is F sharp twice at the 9th fret of the A string. And then that run that we just looked at in the, the end of the three bar transition, two Ds, two D sharps, 5th and 6th fret of the A string. Now, if you listen to the original, excuse me, you'll you'll hear that Noel Redding throws in some slides uh, and makes it um, sound, just gives it a bit of, bit of colour to his line. The first one that you can put in is in the E section of the first bar. So when you go up to that F sharp, what you can do is use the E to slide up and just give you a bit more colour. So you slide slide up from the E to the F sharp and then play E again. And then in the F sharp bar, the two F sharps, which are quarter notes, you can either you can either hammer them from the E, or I prefer to slide them. So that just gives a bit of colour to the um, pattern. Play play the two bars again without the metronome so you can hear and see that. And I really like, a really cool thing to incorporate in other bass lines is this run D, D sharp, leading back to the E, but instead of playing the next E that's chromatically next to the D sharp, dropping down and playing the E an octave lower. I think that's a really cool sound, something you should um, take note of and see where what other bass lines you can incorporate it into. Um, okay, those are the three sections of the tune. If you get those down, get them together, correlate to the original, you should be able to play through Purple Haze and the bass line that I've, I've just looked at basically is reasonably authentic um, and it will sound pretty authentic to the Jimi Hendrix original. So I hope you enjoy that. I'll catch you in the next video.